Hello, I'm Kurt Larson, the founder of Missouri Safe and Sober. During the spring semester, your student will have the opportunity to participate in the Safe and Sober program, which educates teens on the dangers and consequences of underage drinking. The program asks each teen to make a pledge, a written commitment to you, their friends, and themselves to remain alcohol-free until they are 21 years old. It is my hope that by asking each student to take this pledge and then discuss that pledge with you, we can begin to create a culture of change among our teenagers. A culture where underage drinking is not viewed as a rite of passage, but a dangerous decision that has severe consequences. As your teen makes the transition to high school, they will be faced with many dangers, but underage drinking is among the worst. Alcohol kills six times more teens than all illegal drugs combined. Compared to their non-drinking classmates, teens that drink are more likely to die in a car crash, become pregnant, fail classes, be sexually assaulted, become an alcoholic later in life, or commit suicide. To parents, alcohol can seem so common and familiar, it is easy to forget just how dangerous it is to teenagers. Research shows that parents are the most important influence on whether or not teens choose to drink. In a recent survey, local teens stated that the number one reason they don't drink is because of their parents. The students said their parents set clear expectations that alcohol use is not acceptable and the teens fear disappointing their parents. This is why we need your help to prevent underage drinking. Creating a culture of change in our community can start with your child. For teenagers, alcohol is an illegal drug until they are 21 years old. However, teens are not the only ones who can face serious legal consequences as a result of underage drinking. In Missouri, there are criminal penalties for furnishing alcoholic beverages to a minor. Here is Judge Peggy Davis to further explain what you can face if you allow underage drinking in your home. As parents, it is your responsibility to teach your children right from wrong. It is not cool or hip to host drinking parties for your teen and their friends. In fact, it is illegal and very dangerous. Allowing drinking in your home can lead to drinking and driving related car wrecks, alcohol poisoning, sexual assault, serious injuries, or legal consequences for you. In Missouri, it is illegal for anyone under the age of 21 to purchase or consume alcohol. It is a Class B misdemeanor to allow a person under the age of 21 to consume or possess alcohol on your property or property that you occupy or if you fail to stop them from doing so unless you are their parent. This is punishable up to six months in jail and a $500 fine. Having a permissive attitude toward underage drinking can have dangerous consequences for you, your team, and their friends. For the safety of your family and your community, be a parent when it comes to underage drinking and encourage your kids to be safe and sober. As a parent myself, I cannot imagine the heartbreak of losing a child, especially to something as senseless and preventable as drinking and driving. But unfortunately, it happens every day. Five years ago, Bonnie Fuquay was like many of you, enjoying a life filled with laughter, friends, work, and her only son, Chad. But one night, Bonnie's life changed forever. Chad had gone to Marshall, Missouri uh, for the weekend to spend time with these long-term with long-term friends. Around, I think it was around nine o'clock, Chad called and said he was headed home. I said, bye, I love you. And he told me, bye, he loved me. And uh, I said the mom thing, please be careful. And I said, but call me when you get home. And, and uh, he said, well, it'd be around midnight. And I said, I'll just feel better knowing, knowing when you're home. Life changes. In an instant. Possible fatality. The motorcycle had been laid down. There was blood on the road. 
I noted a, a male patient laying in the roadway, a motorcycle on its side with several people standing around. When I got to the patient's side, the first thing that I noted was that the patient had significant head trauma and was not breathing. I checked, he did not have a pulse. It was almost exactly midnight. My phone rang. I answered the phone. You're home safe and sound, huh? And it was the chief of police of the city of Hollister. He said, you need to go to the hospital. Chad's been in an accident. On my arrival at the scene, I noted he was not wearing a helmet while laying on the ground. The helmet was found laying against a guardrail with significant damage to the top of, of the helmet. They don't have to say we did everything we could do. But that's what they said. And I said, tell me what that means. We just did everything we could do. And I asked them, I said, my son is dead. He said, yes. They handed me a little brown envelope. It had his wallet, his keys, and his cell phone. That's all I left the hospital with that night. Oh, his boots. I got his boots. And he said, we're sorry for your loss. And you just sit there and you go, what do you do now? I, I could smell a strong odor of intoxicants coming from the breath of the driver. I asked him to perform the field sobriety test and he refused to. At that point, I placed him under arrest for the driver while intoxicated. Later at the jail, there was uh, two shot glasses recovered out of his pocket that uh, had a odor of intoxicants on them. But further investigation led to finding out that they had been at a couple different bars in the area throughout the night. Some, day, some days you think it's just a dream, it didn't happen. The next time the phone rings, it's going to be him. But I've even gone the other way. Sometimes I think he was just a dream that I never had him that he was never in my life. And then it was this marvelous story I read somewhere about this relationship with this mother and this son. But reality tells you it happened. I know I was lucky I had him 40 years. I know some people don't have their children that long. And we were friends. The last words I heard him say, was, I love you, Mama. I guess that's pretty lucky. While a fatal accident is the most tragic outcome of underage drinking, it is not the only effect drinking can have on a young person's body. A teenager's brain and body are not fully developed, so they react differently to alcohol than an adult body. Pediatric neurosurgeon, Dr. Sami Koshiom of Mercy Hospital Springfield will further explain. When a young person drinks, they are doing serious damage to their brains. Teens' brains are not fully developed until they are 25 years old. During this time of growth, the young brain is undergoing major structural and functional changes. Exposing the brain to alcohol during this time can interrupt critical brain development. For example, the hippocampus is a part of the brain where learning and memory occur. When alcohol reaches this part of the brain, a person may have trouble remembering something they just learned. Teens that repeatedly drink can permanently damage the hippocampus, making learning new things or holding on to knowledge difficult as they get older. Repeated drinking can also affect the frontal areas of the young brain, which control impulses and thinking through consequences. This can lead to poor decision-making, lack of self-control, and even violence, both now and into adulthood. The consequences are tragic and too often deadly. The adolescent brain is also more susceptible to addiction. A child that begins drinking early in life is four times more likely to have an addiction to alcohol than a child that waits until they turn 21. The cost of underage drinking can extend far beyond the criminal repercussions. 
alcohol will have major effects on your teen's brain that can last long past high school. As parents, it is our responsibility to keep our kids healthy, set limits, and encourage them to make safe choices. Please talk with your students about the dangers of underage drinking. Help them realize your expectations are for them to be safe and sober. Provide them with the tools for success and encourage them to sign the Safe and Sober Pledge this spring. Remember, the number one fear for most teens is disappointing their parents. For more information about the program or helpful tips about talking with your teen about alcohol, please visit our website at missourisafeandsober.com. Thank you.